Well, good morning. Welcome to St Paul's Church. My name is Alex. I'm the Associate Vicar here. And we're so glad that you've joined us this morning. If it's your first time here, then welcome. It is amazing to have you. And if you've been a regular and have come along week by week, then welcome back. Great to have you. Before we begin the service properly, we just wanted to give a, a bit of space for an announcement that uh, we had this week. On Wednesday, Ruth, our vicar, was appointed the new Bishop of Horsham. And it's a position that she'll take up in a few months time. Now, if you're anything like me, that's both amazing news and really hard news. It's amazing because we're so proud of Ruth and the family. She has been an amazing vicar and continues to be an amazing vicar here. And we're really excited about what she will bring to the Diocese of Chichester and what a blessing she'll be there. But it's also really hard, both because it's very hard to say goodbye to a great friend and a great colleague or a great vicar that you've known. But it's also really hard because we're all isolated and what we would have shared together, we now have to share apart. And so Ruth recorded a message earlier this week, which we'd love to share with you now. Well, good morning from me to my dear church family, all of you at St Paul's who are watching this morning. And I just wanted to recognise uh, that it's been a difficult week for many people with the announcement on Wednesday that we're going to be leaving. And I just wanted to say I'm really sorry to all of you who found that really hard. Uh, we couldn't delay the announcement indefinitely, but I just recognise that it was a really difficult thing to hear when we're in the midst of lockdown that we're going to be leaving and we couldn't join together as a church as we would in the normal way to kind of receive that news together and process it together. I had the interview for the job way back in February when life was completely normal and the staff team are really strong and the church is in a great place and I went to the interview with a strange sense that this was God's call and that um, we, we would be leaving and um, in his providence I'd be, I was offered the role back in February and said yes and we had absolutely no idea that the coronavirus crisis was then going to break and life just wouldn't be at anything like uh, normal for all these weeks that have gone by but eventually we had to announce it, we couldn't delay any longer and so I'm sorry for those of you who were shocked and upset by that. Thank you so much for all the lovely messages of blessing and congratulations and support and they are really um, have been really appreciated by myself and Ron and the girls so thank you for your good wishes. We're actually not going to be leaving for many months because firstly nobody can move house at the moment or start new jobs properly uh, at all so until we can move house we, we won't be going anywhere and obviously I'll be continuing in my role as your vicar and working as hard as ever uh, for the ministry and the mission of the church to continue and for the love of Jesus and the gospel of Jesus to be known in Dorking and beyond. So that's my focus and I'm not going anywhere for quite some time. Uh, if restrictions are lifted and we can move, we may well move house in August uh, for the children to start new schools in September, but that's a big if uh, and we don't know what's gonna happen. In terms of a consecration date, uh, Westminster Abbey was booked for the 24th of June, but obviously that's had to be cancelled and so that's up in the air. We don't know when there'll be a consecration, but uh, if there's news, we'll make sure you hear and uh, we keep you in touch about that. So thank you for your words of kindness and encouragement. And um, I'm just really, really sorry that the news has broke at a time when we can't be together as a church. Thank you so much, Ruth. Um, well, listen, before we start our service, I think it'd be great for us just to pause for a moment and to pray, uh, pray both for Ruth and Ron and the girls, and also to pray for us as a church uh, and just be reminded again that God is in charge and this is Jesus' church. So should we just close our eyes and let's pray together for a moment. Father, we want to thank you so much uh, for this amazing news uh, of Ruth's appointment. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have planned for her professionally uh, and, Lord, for the family personally. 
Thank you, Lord, that you go ahead of them to prepare the way. And we do ask, Lord, that you would meet all of their worries, all of their anxieties, all of their needs in every way for each one of them, for Ruth and for Ron, for Zoe and for Phoebe, Lord, meet every need. You are such an amazing provider. And Father, for us as a church, we bring ourselves before you this morning and we recognise that this is your church. Jesus is our ultimate leader. And so we look to you, God, and we pray that you provide all that we need as a church community for strength and courage, for wisdom and discernment for the time ahead. And we thank you, God, that you are in control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Alex. Welcome, everyone, to our service of Holy Communion. You'll notice there's a bit of a theme about sheep as we go along. So I'm going to begin by reading part of Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. It's a psalm that I learnt when I was a child because my grandmother was very keen that I should learn it by heart and she gave me half a crown when I succeeded. So I'm going to read it in the authorised version and it's printed on this little china keepsake that used to belong to my grandmother. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. A moment of quiet. so our greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now let's go over to Helena and Ian for our first hymn. Our opening hymn is based on another psalm, Psalm 100, which urges us to shout for joy to the Lord and worship him with gladness. It also mentions that we are his sheep. If you are able to, it would be great to stand together to sing All People That On Earth Do Dwell. Oh, 
Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the God whom heaven and earth adore, from earth and from the angel host, be praise and glory. Thank you, Helena and Ian. Would you like to sit or kneel as we say together our prayer of preparation? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We're coming now to our confession and there is a response. When I say, in your mercy forgive us, please respond, Lord, hear us and help us. Christ died to sin once for all and now he lives. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to say the Gloria together. If you'd like to, please stand. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We come to our prayers now, and first of all, the collect for today, the fourth Sunday of the Easter season. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Heather Goddard, who is training to be a licensed lay minister, for our prayers of intercession. Good morning from Heather. Jenny read us Psalm 23 earlier, and in times of crisis and uncertainty, those familiar words provide us with reassurance and guidance 
So I'm going to weave some verses from Psalm 23 into our intercessions this morning. So shall we pray? The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world as it seeks to find ways of worshipping and witnessing in these strange times and to reach out to those who are struggling. We pray for your church in Peru, for Penny and Juan Carlos in Lima, providing food for the hungry, and your church in France, the Centre de la Reconciliation in Lille, providing shelter for young migrants. We pray for our own church here at St Paul's. We thank you so much for Ruth and her family, for all they have meant to us, and for her leadership, hospitality, and ministry here. And we pray for them as they face the changes and challenges ahead. We pray for one another, acknowledging our feelings of loss and uncertainty as Ruth moves on. But we know that it is God who is our shepherd and he will lead us as he always has led us. Lord, be our shepherd. Amen. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. We pray for ourselves and for all who are feeling anxious and alone. We pray that we may seek time with God in the quiet of our homes, our gardens, or in his wonderful creation. And we pray that we allow his spirit to quieten and soothe our unquiet minds. Lord, refresh our souls. Amen. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. We pray for wise decision-making and effective government from our Prime Minister and Cabinet. We pray also for integrity and humility for them and for us, the courage to admit to failings and the wisdom to learn from mistakes. We pray for your protection over our Queen, thanking you for her long, steadfast and faithful service to us. Lord, guide us all along the right paths. Amen. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So many people are struggling, suffering and grieving at this time. We pray for them and for all who minister to them, the cleaners, the cooks, the care workers, the medical staff. And in a moment of silence, let's pray for all of those who are on our hearts and minds this morning. Lord, walk with us through the darkest valley. Amen. And let's finish our prayers this morning with some wonderful words of affirmation. The last verse of Psalm 23. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The King of Love, My Shepherd Is is a beautifully poetic version of Psalm 23, which points very much to Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for his sheep.
Thank you to Helena and Ian for that hymn. We now come to our readings from the Gospel of John and the Book of Acts, and I'm going to hand over to Steve Goddard to read for us. Good morning, my name's Steve Goddard, and we have two readings for you this morning. The first one is from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 11. The Good Shepherd and His Sheep very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Amen. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47. The Fellowship of the Believers They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello everyone. If you could be an animal, any animal at all, for a day, which animal do you think you'd be? Maybe a dolphin surging through the waves, leaping and playing in the water. Maybe an eagle soaring in the sky, enjoying the view. Maybe a lion, magnificent and powerful. Whatever you chose, I'm pretty confident it won't have been a sheep. Renowned for being a bit dim, a bit dull, a life consisting mainly of eating grass. Yet sheep are the animal we are most often likened to in the Bible. There are four suggested readings for today. We had Psalm 23 at the start of our service and we've just heard our readings from John's Gospel and from Acts. The final one comes from the end of 1 Peter chapter 2. Three of these four feature sheep. 
Psalm 23, David's most famous psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. And although he doesn't spell it out, the implication is, and I am his sheep. Jesus is more explicit in John 10. He is the good shepherd and we are the sheep. And in the reading from 1 Peter, we are reminded that we were like sheep going astray. Since Easter, we've been exploring here the theme of resurrection life. Christians believe that the death of Jesus on a Roman cross nearly 2,000 years ago, and then three days later, his resurrection, that these are the most important events in all of history. Through them, Jesus opened the way to new life. Sometimes we call it eternal life. In John 10, life in all its fullness, life in deep relationship with God. How can we receive that life today and how can we live lives transformed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ continually? And today I want to use that favourite biblical metaphor of sheep to help us receive and enter into that resurrection life. First, I think we need to embrace this metaphor, embrace our sheepness, not be sheepish about it, although it isn't comfortable. David, the psalmist, was king of Israel, the greatest king of ancient Israel. Yet despite his grandeur and power, he recognised before God that he was like a sheep in need of God's care, protection, guidance and love. And maybe the upheaval of these times has brought home that we all need that, whoever we are. David also knew more than most that like a sheep, he was prone to going astray. I don't think sheep ever really intend to get lost. It's certainly not in their interest. They just nibble away at the grass and follow the trail of the greenest grass, focused on their eating. And then suddenly they stop and look up and they realise they're alone and lost. And maybe ever, as everything has stopped with this lockdown, you suddenly feel a bit lost. You've been busy getting on with life. But in the lockdown, you've noticed that your life before was lacking. It's certainly not the life in all its fullness Jesus speaks of. The first step to resurrection life, I think, is in humility recognising that we are sheep and lost sheep in need of help. And the help we need most is that of a shepherd, one who can lead us to green pastures and quiet waters, one who can refresh our soul and lead us on the right paths. No ordinary shepherd will do, only the good shepherd, the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is that shepherd. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter reminds us that Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds ye have been healed, for ye were like sheep going astray. In laying down his life on the cross, Jesus dealt with all our wrongs and poor choices. He received the just penalty. And he did away with the guilt and shame that we often carry with us. And because of that, the good shepherd can bring us back to God and life in all its fullness. For it is found in and through following this good shepherd. No, importantly, this isn't the way to a cushy life. Each of our three sheep passages makes that clear. In Psalm 23, David speaks of being led through the darkest valley, as well as beside quiet waters. In John 10, Jesus warns of thieves and robbers who want to harm the sheep. And Peter reminds us that following Jesus means following him in the way of the cross, a way 
that involves suffering for others and the possibility of rejection and pain. For it is only the way of the cross that makes possible resurrection life. This is the way to find life in all its fullness. So we need to recognise that we are but sheep. Sheep who often get lost. And we need to follow the Good Shepherd, the one who laid down his life for us. How can we follow this Good Shepherd well? If you've been reading Alex, our Associate Vicar's reflections in our Friday email, you will have seen his encouragement to, to take this lockdown opportunity to really listen to God. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. And I'd encourage you to think back to the times ye have experienced God's guidance and care. What helps you hear from God? It might be reading the Bible, praying on your knees, listening to worship music, or just making time and space to be still and quiet before the Lord. In this lockdown, make time for those things. If you'd like help or encouragement or you've got questions about hearing from God, do get in touch with Alex. So we need to know we are sheep and follow the Good Shepherd listening out for his voice. Finally, as sheep, we need the flock. A sheep on its own is always a lost sheep. And the Good Shepherd doesn't just find us, he brings us to be with his flock. And this brings us to the other passage set for today, the only one that doesn't mention sheep, but is all about the flock. The end of Acts chapter 2, it follows Peter's address to the crowds on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 people, we're told, responded to Peter's message about Jesus and were baptised. And our section today describes what those 3,000 did next. And there is one word that keeps on recurring, together. Together they listened to the apostles' teaching, broke bread, prayed. Together they shared their possessions. Together they met to praise God. We've been really encouraged that our online services have been getting more views than the number of people who were typically turning up to our church building for services before the lockdown. And I'm pretty sure it's not just down to my mother watching my talks on repeat. Maybe you used to come to St Paul's every now and then, and you've been finding yourself tuning in nearly every week to our online services. When the lockdown is over, why not come every week? For we need others to follow Jesus. The very first disciples knew this from the start. And others might need you. They might need your encouragement and support. And if you live further afield, I really do encourage you to find a church near you when this crisis is over. Before I pray to finish, this is an unusual time for our church community. Ruth, our wonderful vicar, is moving on to be the next Bishop of Horsham. And we are thrilled and delighted for her. And so glad that the Church of England have recognised the amazing gifting so many of us have witnessed and been blessed by over the last few years. But I know for many of us this could be another unsettling change in a time when everything seems to be changing. And I just want to reassure that while Ruth is moving on, responding to the voice of the Good Shepherd, calling her onto new things, we, as St Paul's, remain firmly under his care and his leadership. And he will continue to lead St Paul's into life in all its fullness. So let's pray. I'm going to start with a prayer for anyone who feels like a lost sheep and wants to respond to Jesus this morning. If that's you, I just invite you to echo these words in your hearts. Lord Jesus, I confess that I am like a lost sheep. 
Thank you that you have searched me out and found me. Thank you that you laid down your life for me. Today I choose to follow you. Please lead me in the way of life in all its fullness. Amen. And a prayer for us all. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the good shepherd. Help us all to learn afresh, to hear your voice and keep on responding to your call. We pray for our community in this time of change, that you would strengthen it and grow it, even whilst we can't physically meet together. Together, help us to follow you in the way of the cross and the way of resurrection life. Amen. Thank you, Ollie, for your words today. Shall we respond to that message by saying together the creed, the words will come up on the screen. Do stand up if you'd like to. So we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And I pray that God will strengthen this faith in all of us. It would be good now to share the peace together. Since we can't do this in a physical way one to another, let's use the British Sign Language. So in case you haven't come across this before, this is how it goes. It's like this. Peace be with you. So let's do it together. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And now we come to our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your faith, face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our story. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, 
we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We come now to the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called in to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And as I receive on behalf of the whole church community, please do pray the prayer that will come up and then there'll be some reflective music for you to listen to. And now let's say together the post-communion prayer. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights bring light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we go over to Helena and Ian for our final hymn. Church of God, elect and glorious, with wonderful words from 1 Peter chapter 2, reminds us that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation and a people belonging to God, 
who are to live in his most marvellous light and let his love flow out to others as well as to each other. Church of God, elect and glorious, holy nation, chosen race, called as God's own special people, royal priests and heirs of grace. Know the purpose of your calling, show to all his mighty deeds, tell of love which knows the limits, grace which meets all human needs. God has called you out of darkness into his most marvellous light, brought his truth to life within you, turned your blindness into sight. Let your light so shine all around you that God's name is glorified and all find fresh hope and purpose in Christ Jesus crucified. Once you were an alien people, strangers to God's heart of love, he brought you home in mercy, citizens of heaven above. Let his love flow out to others, let them feel a father's care. And they too may know his welcome, and his countless blessings share. Church of God, elect and holy, be the people he intends. Strong in faith and swift to answer each command your master sends. Royal priests, fulfill your calling through your sacrifice and prayer. Okay, so we've come to the most exciting part of the whole service. News and notices. Three things that we'd love to invite you to think about joining this week, in the middle of the week here at St Paul's. First of all, on Wednesday evening, uh, we're starting a brand new online Alpha course. Uh, register at the link below and find out more about what it is to go on this journey of faith with God. Who is Jesus? Why did he die? How do I read my Bible? Why and how does God guide me through life? If you've got those questions, if you've never done an Alpha course before, it's a great way to find out more about God and who he is and your plans and purposes within all of that. So register below and find out more. On Wednesday evening as well at eight o'clock, we're going to be hosting a prayer course online here at St Paul's. I wonder whether you in this time of lockdown have wondered how you can communicate with God better? Have you ever evaluated your prayer life? Well, over the next eight weeks, we're gonna be looking at different models and ways of praying to God, listening to him, contemplation, finding out more what it is to have a relationship with God. And so why not sign up for the first week and see how it goes? If you want to grow in prayer, if you want to learn how to pray, or if you just want to come together and be part of a community of people over the next few weeks who are finding more about God, then why don't you register and the link below or email me and I'll tell you how you can sign up for that. And then finally, on Thursday at 8pm, we are going to be having a Parenting for Faith course. Ollie and Natasha from our church are going to be hosting a group that's going to be thinking about how do we grow faith? in our children. We believe that 
parents, whether they're foster parents, regular parents, godparents, grandparents, any kind of parent you can think of, are the best people to help children grow in their knowledge and their faith in God. And so why not sign up for that course and find out how to help your child or a child that you know and love really well to grow in an authentic and a genuine and a simple faith. Sign up for that. If you're wondering about ways that you can get involved in support here at St Paul's, then may I encourage you to go to the food bank link. Uh, we continue to support them here in Dorking uh, and you can buy extra food this week and leave it in the bins in the supermarkets. If you're getting your shopping delivered and you're trying to isolate, then we have a food bin right at St Paul's Church and you can leave it. It's isolated, you can leave food there. And then finally, if you need support, if we can support you in any way, practically, having a conversation with you, praying with you, if you feel isolated and alone, then we would love to be in touch with you. We're exploring all kinds of ways to try and bring community together here at St Paul's. But for now, please email us at support at stpaulsdorking.org.uk and we'll be back in touch with you and help in any way that we can. Thanks so much for listening. God bless you and back to the service. Thank you, Alex. Now a final prayer of blessing as we end our service. God, the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God, the Son, who in bursting forth from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those whom you love and pray for, now and forever. Amen. We go in peace, the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.